They found their sister frozen. Instantly enjoy it. We start off with a little boy, Danny, watching his dad and brother, Walter, throw and catch a ball. Now it's his turn. His brother wanted to go on forever, but his dad insists it's Danny's turn. There's a little argument between the boys. You know how brothers are. Then dad throws to Danny. Danny is a bad catcher though. So his brother jumps in to catch the next ball thrown. Danny calls his brother some names and storms into the house. Dad goes after him and finds him hiding in the dumb waiter. Quite the name for such a contraption. He talks to him about using that kind of language and also tells him it's not a bad thing that he can't catch at 6. Danny compares himself to Walter, who is 10, saying Walter is better than him at everything. Dad tells him he's better at piano, but Danny says he hates that stupid thing. He then runs off to his room and Dad follows him. Danny is still talking about how Walter beats him at everything, and Dad is now telling him that he's special and he has an incredible imagination. Walter's at the other side of the door eavesdropping when Danny asks if his own imagination is better than Walter's. Dad replies, you're different than Walter. Right answer, dude. Anyway, Walter's trying to play football catch, but Dad says he has to work. Apparently, his parents are divorced and mom is coming to get the boys later in the day. But from Walter's reaction, it seems like he prefers to be with dad than mom. I've always been a mama's boy myself. Now the boys come in and are arguing again. Dad is headed up to here, so he yells at both of them. He then calms down and tells them that there are some days when they have to grow up all at once, and he needs today to be one of those days. Now the boys are in their room trying to figure out what game to play. Actually, Danny is trying to figure out what game to play and Walter's being so unresponsive. So Danny asks him when he became so mean, but Walter says he's not mean. He's just grown up. You know, fourth grader who has a girlfriend grown up. Anyway, Walter eventually agrees to play army men with his brother, but it soon turns into a fight and Danny ruins dad's picture so he has to run off to go get a replacement. But before he goes, he goes upstairs to wake their older sister Lisa. He asks her to watch the boys, but as soon as he leaves, she goes straight back to sleep because she has a date by eight. Typical. Danny is now playing video games and Walter comes to turn it off because dad said no video games. Walter is now watching baseball and won't change it to Spongebob, which Danny wants. So Danny goes to get a baseball in mid and asks to play, but again, Walter says no. So Danny just starts throwing the ball at him until he throws it too hard and Walter starts chasing him around the house. Danny goes to hide in the dumb waiter and when Walter finds him, he rolls him down to the basement. He's now walking around the basement and when he hears a creepy noise, he runs out and on his way out, he finds an old game under the staircase. The name of the game? Zathora, a space adventure, aka Jumanji in space. He brings the game upstairs and since Walter is uninterested, he's now exploring the game alone. He hits a button and a card comes out. He can't read what's written on the card so he hands it to his brother to help him out. The card says, Meteor Shower, take evasive action. And while Walter is explaining to his brother what is written on the card, something drops from the roof and shoots right through the card to the floor. Then the TV goes blank. The house starts shooting shaking and stuff starts breaking all around the living room. Apparently, this is the meteor shower. The boys start running around and finally take cover in the fireplace. Then the TV comes back on and when they think it's all cool, one huge meteor drops from the sky and destroys the TV. Oh, and by the way, while all the chaos was happening in the living room, Lisa was upstairs on her bed with her headphones on. The boys now notice all the chaos only happened in the living room, and when they look through the hole in the ceiling, they realize they're in space. They open the door and confirm it. Walter spits and his saliva is floating. Their house is basically floating in outer space. Elon Musk, eat your heart out. At this point, they have to tell their sister, so they head to her room and wake her up. They roll the window up to show her they're in space, but she thinks it's just night already, and all she's concerned about is getting ready for her date, which she believes she's already late for. They manage to convince her to watch what the game does, and this time, it's nothing dramatic. He's promoted to starship captain and moves ahead two spaces. That's it. You knew that would happen, didn't you? So Lisa closes the door, thinking they're just pulling her leg. But the next turn, the card says, Sleepmate enters cryonic sleep chamber for five turns. Then boom, Lisa's bathroom turns to ice, and she's frozen, like Elsa. You get it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Walter goes to bring fire to melt her, but Danny suggests it might be time to read the instructions. This is for all you who don't read terms and conditions first. Anyway, the instructions say once they embark on the journey, there's no turning back until Zathora is reached. So they get back to playing. It's Walter's turn now. His card says his robot is defective. Next, we see the silhouette of a huge robot approaching them, but only a little robot appears saying emergency. Funny, right? But not so funny when the little robot starts growing. It's now almost as tall as the house. It looks at Walter and says, alien life form, must destroy, and then runs straight towards the boys, but they jump out of the way at the last second and it runs into the wall. It turns towards Walter and says, alien life form must destroy, again, and Walter tells Danny to go take his turn. He's too scared to do anything though, as the robot chases Walter around the house. It goes out the window, comes back into the house, and crashes into a wall, but it doesn't stop this robot. It's so relentless. It still has its sights set on the little boy. How about you pick on a robot your own size? Like the new robot that Elon just announced. Anyway, Danny finally takes his turn and everything in the house starts moving sideways, including their frozen sister. The card says something about entering the gravity field. Their house is now in free fall, but thankfully, that throws the robot downstairs just before it could get Walter. By the time everything normalizes, Lisa has now rolled downstairs all the way from her bathroom. Walter risks his life and goes downstairs to get his shoe from the robot. And honestly, I can't blame him. Those are Nikes. The boys now take their sister back up to where she was, and Walter gets back to
into the game where he's now promoted to Fleet Admiral and moves up four spaces. Danny, on the other hand, is no longer interested in playing. He goes to the kitchen to make himself mac and cheese because he's hungry. And there in the kitchen, the boys get into another argument. But this one is not as bad as the other ones. The boys actually come to an understanding. Danny says he wants Walter to not be mean to him, not ignore him, and treat him like a brother. And Walter says cool, so Danny agrees to play. Now, the card says they're visited by Zorgons, and then they hear a deafening noise and see something moving outside the house. It stops in front of the kitchen and starts shooting into the house. It's now following the boys everywhere, even into the fireplace that was once their fortress. In the midst of the chaos, Walter takes his turn and the card says reprogram, but they don't know what that means. Walter even tries to show the card to the Zorgon, like it'll read it and obey, but it still shoots at him. Surprise! Anyway, Danny takes his turn and the card tells him to rescue a stranded astronaut. They first go to hide, but then they hear the bell ring. Of course, they don't open, so the astronaut just breaks in. But he's cool. He doesn't attack them or anything. In fact, he gives Walter a little lesson to not be quick to sell out his brother because he's all he's got. We'll understand this better later. Anyway, he's now helping the boys with their Zorgon problem. His big idea? To hide the house. The entire house, bro? I want to see how you're going to do that. He gives the boys some instructions, basically to turn off electrical appliances and put out all the fires. Well, it works. As soon as the entire house goes dark, the Zorgons stop attacking. The astronaut then sets dad's nap couch on fire and pushes it out into space. The Zorgons follow the heat and go away. Apparently, Zorgons are heat seekers and they fly around looking for anything they can burn up so that it tracks them. After the Zorgon problem is solved, the astronaut raids the fridge because he had been eating paste out of a tube for 15 years. Walter doesn't like that he's eating all their food, so he confronts him. He stands on his authority as fleet admiral and asks him to leave his house. But of course, that doesn't work. It's just a card. Oh, and by the way, the astronaut is a fleet admiral too. Note this. I wonder what it all means. Anyway, Astronaut Guy says since it was Danny who spun him, only Danny can ask him to leave. But Danny doesn't really want him to leave because he has been helpful. So, he asks him to stay. In spite of the stare down he was receiving from his brother, he apologizes to Walter, though. But he shut him up. They get back to the game and Walter notices something is wrong. He says he was ahead of Danny before, but now Danny is ahead. So, he immediately accuses his brother of cheating. Then, they start shouting at each other. To solve the whole thing, Walter moves Danny's piece backward and then takes his turn. But the card that comes out says, Caught cheating. Automatic rejection. Then boom. So Something sucks Walter up into space and he nearly goes out through the hole in the roof, but he manages to hold on until he couldn't last any longer. But the astronaut, whom he never wanted to stay, ended up being the person who went into space to rescue him. Walter's back in the living room now and is blaming his younger brother for everything. Danny keeps apologizing, but Walter seems uninterested in his apology. Anyway, Danny goes his turn and the card says, goes, loose map of galaxy, go back two spaces. His piece goes back two spaces, but more importantly, five turns have gone. So Lisa unfreezes in the bathroom and is now looking very suspicious. Unsurprisingly, she's cold as hell, so she goes to turn up the heat. The fire is up again, and you know what that means, don't you? The Zorgons will be back soon. Anyway, she goes back into the shower and blasts her music. Obviously, she has no idea what happened to her over the last few minutes. The boys get back to the game. Walter rolls a 9 and gets a gold card, which says, Shooting Star, make a wish as it passes. He's really excited about his card, but instead of focusing on his excitement, he decides to pick on his brother for the umpteenth time. Boy, how about you give the little boy a break? He's blaming him for everything now, even their parents' divorce. That's so mean. And Danny reacts by picking the game up, tossing it, and running off. As he runs off, the shooting star appears, and guess what Walter's wishes? No, it's not what you're thinking. He didn't wish his brother never existed. He's not a monster. He wishes for something a lot sillier. A signed football. Well, better silly than his brother not existing, to be fair. But why in outer space did this lad not just wish for the game to just be over? Why did he not wish for them to be back to their normal lives? These are the questions Danny is now asking him, and his reply is that he was under a lot of pressure from the astronaut yelling at him. Well, I thought you were a tough guy. You couldn't withstand some yelling? Your girlfriend won't be very proud of you. Anyway, Astronaut Guy is now telling the boys his own story. Apparently, 15 years ago, he was just like them, playing the same game with his own brother, whom he used to fight with a lot, and their fighting only got worse as the game progressed. He's telling them now that while he was playing, he got the wish card that Walter just got, and his wish was what you thought Walter was going to wish. He wished that his brother had never been born, so he was stuck there in the game because the game would not allow him to spin again, as it was not his turn. And since his brother didn't exist anymore, it could never be his turn again. He ends with a lesson to Walter. There are some games you cannot play alone. The story seems to have worked. The boys agree to work together and finish off the game. But just before they get back to the game, they hear a loud bang. Zorgons are back. They don't come for them this time though. They take the game and leave. Their only way back home is gone. So they try to burn some wood in order to generate some heat to get the Zorgons to come back. While they're doing that, Lisa comes downstairs and puts out the fire. She still doesn't know they're in a game and in space. Anyway, the heat they generated was enough to bring the Zorgons back. And while the boys patiently wait for them to approach, Lisa is freaking out. She runs down 
downstairs trying to find hiding, but she sees the robot and runs back up. On her way, she meets the astronaut who tries to comfort her, and it seems like she's found love in his eyes. You're finding love in the midst of all this chaos? I guess Rihanna would be proud because she found love in a hopeless place. Anyway, they head back upstairs as the Zorgons are absolutely wrecking the entire house. They land on the house and the astronaut tries to get into their ship to get the game while the kids hide in the laundry room. He keeps in touch with the walkie-talkie from Army Men. Oh, by the way, I'm correct. Lisa is in love with him. She's talking about his eyes, how safe she feels around him, and all that girl talk. Ma'am, we're in space. Can you please focus? Anyway, the astronaut comes back without the game. And then Danny comes up with a brilliant idea. He says the astronaut can use the dumb waiter. Once he grabs the game, they'll quickly pull him back up. But here's the thing. Astronaut guy and everyone else is too big for the dumb waiter. So Danny has to go. But before he agrees to go, he asks, do we really need the game? And I could really relate to him in that moment. Because that's the exact same question I would ask if I were in his shoes. Anyway, just before he's lowered down, him and his brother have a really cute moment. Walter tells him he'll never let anything happen to him. Danny apologizes for cheating. They're cool now. While they're lowering Danny and the dumb waiter, a Zorgon appears in the distance so they stop lowering. And don't answer when he asks why via the walkie-talkie, because they were trying to stay as quiet as possible. So Danny, who doesn't know what is going on, shakes the dumb waiter and something disconnects. Now he's in free fall. They try to save him by holding onto the ropes, and the noise brings the Zorgons back. Meanwhile, Danny is now close enough to the basement. He sees the box, so he just jumps down and picks it, but it's just the box. The game itself is on the Zorgon ship, and Danny goes to get it even though the astronaut warns him not to. This boy is so brave. He really is in the Zorgon's territory right now. He escapes a Zorgon which was out for him, passes through some alien-looking goats with four eyes, and rescues the game. Meanwhile, he has now lost the walkie-talkie, so he can't even communicate with the people in the house anymore. The last thing that was heard before one of the Zorgons smashed the walkie-talkie was the astronaut telling him to stay put and not come up yet. But Danny didn't hear that, so once he got the game, he went straight to the dumb waiter and started shaking it for them to pull him up. A Zorgon notices the movement and immediately cuts the rope, and the dumb waiter lands on the ground. Meanwhile, on his back, Danny stepped on some slimy stuff, so he basically left a trail which his Zorgon is now following. That Zorgon roars, as if to call other Zorgons, and they are all now on Danny's tail. Just before they get to him, Walter comes and pulls him in, but they're met with more Zorgons up the stairs. But as they're still standing there, the robot comes back out and grabs Walter by the neck. And now, his reprogram card works. The robot reprograms and goes straight for the Zorgons. Oh, these Zorgons can run away? Interesting to see. Anyway, the robot is a man on a mission. He keeps saying, alien life form must destroy. So he makes sure to destroy the Zorgons, but there's one left in the house. One that nearly claps the boys, but the big sister comes to the rescue. They get back to the game now. Danny spins and gets a nine. The card says, flunk space academy, go back one space. Walter quickly spins right after. He gets a three and his card says, hit time warp, go back three spaces, repeat last turn. So he gets another wishing card. His chance is here. The shooting star comes around. He stands, faces the star, closes his eyes, and wishes the astronaut had his brother back. And you won't believe what appeared. Danny, you get what that means, right? Walter actually wished his brother away 15 years ago and grew up to be the astronaut. But my question now is, if his brother was Danny all along, how come he hasn't said anything this entire time? Like, they're really wearing the exact same clothes? You could have just said something, bro. Anyway, the two Dannys touch and, um, pretty much merge into each other. And Big Walter goes to Little Walter and says thank you. He also tells him to make sure Danny gets home safe. After that, he puts his hand on Little Walter, changes into Little Walter, and then they merge. It was at that moment that Lisa realized that she had been crushing on her own younger brother all along. Gross. But you can't exactly blame her, can you? Anyway, there are now Zorgon ships all around their house shooting everywhere. So they get back to the game and try to get a 10. Apparently, they need a 10 to win. But Danny only gets a 1. I suck, he says. But the card thinks otherwise, kid. The card says, would you like to swing on a star? Move ahead 9 spaces. You know what that means, right? In case you always missed math class, 1 plus 9 is 10. So they actually get the 10 they need and beat the game. But the next few seconds don't feel like winning. They feel like the apocalypse. As a matter of fact, everything is burning. A ball in the game starts spinning really quickly, then it stops. A card comes out which says, game over. Thank you for playing. Um, okay. While they're wondering why they aren't home yet, something rips out the wall and sucks Lisa into a black hole. The boys are holding on for dear life while literally everything is being sucked into the black hole. Their pieces on the board are still moving, and then Walter is also sucked into the hole. Danny closes his eyes and lets out the loudest scream his tiny vocal cords can muster, and boom! He opens his eyes and finds himself at home in front of the game with Walter still watching sports. And would you believe it? This little boy's hand was on the button. Walter tells him not to push it. I can't believe he even needed someone to tell him not to push the button after all that. They go and check everything and it's all back to normal. Now, the boys are best of friends. Their dad gets back and they tell him all about it, but he's hardly even listening. Relatable. He just seems happy that his boys are finally getting along. Now, the boys are outside playing catch when their mom comes to pick them up. Their sister joins them and they all promise to never speak on this again. Just before the screen goes black, a bicycle falls from the sky. Don't ask me what that means, I don't know. Moral of the story? Jumanji.